up everybody thank you for tuning in and welcome back to another episode of the crypto remora we come to you every week and talk all things crypto to keep you guys up to date informed entertained and ahead of the markets my name is wes and i am joined with as always siri crypto oh, what's up siri what's up people how we doing doing good brother we are doing good man i'm excited for tonight's show we got a lot to go over and bitcoin is sitting at this critical level between 41,000 and 42,000. so we're going to talk about what needs to happen to maintain these uh levels and stay above this critical level of support and uh, hopefully push up back around that fifty thousand dollar level and beyond hopefully right fingers crossed but um but yeah, and, and but also what happens, you know, when we fall below these levels, you know, there's uh, that thirty seven thousand eight hundred dollar level that Sierra has been talking about for a long time. Maybe we mm -hmm. revisit those levels and um, I think that would be healthy. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. And then also, uh, I know you guys, a lot of you are, you know, kind of been disappointed in the ETF stuff. You know, everybody was kind of expecting Bitcoin to take off um, after the ETF went live. Uh, but trust me, like we understand it. We, we've been doing this for a long time and we get it, man. Like sometimes you get disappointed with things like this, but sometimes there's a bigger picture at play, right? Sometimes they're, you know, these guys could be trying to bore you out of the markets. We're going to talk about that a little bit more, hopefully bring some clarity to the ETF stuff and, uh, and get back on track with this stuff. And then last but not least, you know, Ethereum and the altcoins, they've been outperforming Bitcoin here lately. So I would like to kind of talk about that a little bit. Why is this? Is Ethereum the Trojan horse or is this the real prize to win? Uh, I got an interesting theory, Siri, and I know that uh, you have some thoughts on that as well. And I know you guys are going to be interested to hear about that. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video. And uh, without wasting any more time, man, let's get into it. Siri, what's going on, man? I just want to say real quick, man, shout out to Wes last week. If you guys didn't know, I know our inner circle on crypto Twitter knew about this, but shout out to Wes, man. He um, uh -oh. thought fast and acted fast at work. And um, he had he had one of his coworkers have a very tragic accident. You know, I don't want to get into details about it, but he he um, basically could have lost his life. And Wes you know, had to pull it, put on his Superman cape, dude, and uh, <laughs> saved the guy's life pretty much, man. Got him on, scary, got him breathe, got him breathing again. Got him on the ambulance, and and thank God the guy's okay. He's recovering now, and uh, but yeah, dude, uh, just want to say shout out to to you for doing that, brother, because that is uh, it was uh, man, Mount. It was a scary moment, dude. It was a scary moment, dude. And uh, today was his his he was you know his first day back to work, man. And um, it was just really good to talk to him and uh you know we watched the video together and uh it was you know it was an emotional moment man but um he's good you know he's good and uh it was just it was awesome to see him at work today man so uh yeah i'm just thankful that um that it turned out good you know what i mean because it, it could have been completely different but it, it's not and uh yeah man i'm just uh i'm just glad he's good man yeah thank you dude well, thank that was that and that that was good, dude. That you you know CPR mouth to mouth and and <laughs> hitting his chest and having to do all that for somebody, dude. Yeah. I mean, it's like everybody thinks they'll do that when the situation happens, right. but it's like you know I've seen people freeze up when stuff happens, and it's like you 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 did you did good uh, reacting quick. And I know you said your dad was a EMT. Yeah, he's retired EMT. Yeah. So thank God, thank God for your father too for doing that, and you know some of that rubbing off on you, man, because that. I mean that could have that could have went really bad, dude. That could have yeah. went that could have went the other way, but thank God it didn't. It so. was scary, man. It, it was That's definitely awesome. one of the scariest moments of my life for sure, dude. Um, but yeah, scary, man. I like. I know you've been like super busy with the move in and and all that yeah. good stuff, man. But uh, I know you do not, um, you know, stray from crypto for 
for longer than an hour or two. So, uh, Bitcoin, man, where, where are we sitting at? What are you thinking is going to happen, dude? You've talked about, you know, the thirty-seven, thirty-eight thousand dollar level for a long time. Do you think we come back and retest that? And if we do, like, what, what, what's next, dude? What, what do you, uh, okay. what do you have in mind? Okay, so before before we jump into the TA, because I yeah. really do have some good TA for you guys, and I do have a very strong theory on that that yeah. thirty-seven to eight level. But before we get into that, real quick. Mm -hmm. Um, over on our friends over on altcoin daily put a video out earlier and I saw this tweet and I'm going to pull this tweet up and I'm going to read it word for word. Okay. okay. So bankless HQ says, uh, Coinbase says that, that, um, crypto is a $1 trillion asset class. We disagree that crypto is an asset class. It is a rounding error in the economy and requires no new laws. The U.S. equity market is 100 trillion, and the global market is 400 trillion. Crypto is a rounding error. That's what the SEC's lawyers just said today mm -hmm. in their SEC Coinbase uh, case. So I just want to say shout out to um, Gary Gensler's mother. Your mother's a rounding error. Okay, your mother had a rounding error. <laughs> not the mom. Right? Not the mom. <laughs> not so the mom. yeah. Not the mom. I'm sorry, but here's the thing. Look, I'm so sick and tired of these regulators running their mouth yeah. about things that are trying to take away Americans' freedoms. For sure. So yeah. it, it, it's beyond the crypto. It's beyond the, the fraudulent activities and insecurities. Mm. I can deal with all that stupidness, yeah. but lay off my freedom, man. I'm an American. Back the hell up. Like, yeah. seriously, dude. I'm getting sick of it. So I think more people are starting to come to that. And, and think like that, man. Like, um, I, I, honestly, dude, I think that crypto is like, I don't know, man. I, th I think it stands more for financial freedom and more uh, like freedom, dude. Like when I think of crypto, dude, I think of freedom. And uh, when I think of freedom, I think of America. And I think that, you know, uh, it's going to I think that's going to be a huge topic for discussion when, uh, you know, the the primaries come up, man, with the, you know, presidential elections and stuff man and um you know dude i, I saw a clip today man with uh pres you know president trump was talking about if i become president like there's no way in hell cbdc's are gonna be a thing and i don't know man like what do you think about trump and and like the cbdc's and the nfts like obviously you know he's put out a couple of um nft projects on polygon uh should have been arbitrum but he went with polygon um <clears throat> he needs uh he probably needs a better advisor yeah his, that was uh, a mistake team. i think that was a mistake personally <laughs> but i now, mean like dude this, i think this is a big topic man when it comes to uh the elections this time dude people want they're interested they they want their freedoms and crypto is freedom you know what i mean like it's financial freedom like you own you actually own your own money you own your own assets like it's uh you know locked into code like it's yours and uh, I don't know. It, I thought it was pretty cool to see him come around. He might be a little, you know, warmed up to NFTs more than he is to actual, you know, different like. I don't know, dude. What's your take on that, man? What do you think? President Trump well, pro crypto or no? Well, you know, my thing is either way, it, it's I, I watched it, the video and, he, you know, one of the highlights in Altcoin Daily's video was saying that basically, you know, Trump was like. 2020 is like no crypto's no good because it's yeah, competing with the dollar then right. then then 2021 he kind of said the same thing then 2021 22 and then in 2023 he's like oh i got an nft on polygon buy my nft <laughs> right. so you know i take everything that any politician whether i like them vote for them or not i take mm -hmm. anything that any politician says with a grain of salt bro right, because they're right, trying right. to get elected they have an agenda so here's the thing I don't think people are educated enough on crypto mm -hmm. to um, I don't think the masses know enough yet. Mm -hmm. and it's not because they're not smart enough. It's just because they haven't yeah. dove into it enough. They've heard too so much I, FUD too, man. There's been, and there's been a lot FUD. of exactly. So I, I think that what matters more right now is education. Right. I think what we're, what we're doing, what the channel's doing, what everyone else, all these other channels are out here doing, I think that's the most important is getting the word out about yeah. crypto and what it really is and how it how it yeah. really is For once sure. you're 
in, into it. So I think that that matters more. I know that this election is a sore topic for a lot of people, so I'm not even going to get political right, right now. Right, right, right. But, but what I am going to say is I think that anyone who is anti-crypto is pretty much going to be— Dead in the water, dude. You're yeah, you're, no you're holding on to a you're holding on to a, a, a dead horse mm -hmm. because even even the other side that hates Trump is embracing crypto. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, you're gonna lose if you don't embrace crypto. There's so line. many and, and users. I mean, dude, if you look at the the stats, man, you look at the data. Like, there's so many people, so many active users coming in daily, dude. Like, I think Solana had over ninety thousand new active wallets come in within twenty four hours, and like. The thing about Solana that we all know, probably 80% of that is retail, dude. Like, that's where a lot of them start at. So to see that um, is, yeah, I mean, it, it speaks volumes to me, dude. And I, you're you're absolutely right. The average person knows nothing about crypto. And um, it's funny because today, you know, I was at work and we're having a conversation. And I can't really remember how it started. But anyways, we were talking about somebody went in the lottery getting rich and like buying lambos and stuff and there was a guy at work that was like well wes is gonna be you know the first one here to buy a lambo with his uh crypto money with his bitcoin money and i'm like you know just kind of chuckle or whatever like anybody that's into crypto knows this happened like this is a conversation that happens a lot right and um and, and, like, it was instantly taken away. It was instantly taken back. Like, yeah, right. He's going to be driving a Prius with a Lamborghini body sitting on top of it after Bitcoin goes to zero. You know, and laughs about it. But I'm telling you what, man. They speak like this because they know nothing about it. It's their way of, like, I don't know, man. It's their way of kind of getting around the conversation of crypto. Because, nobody, you know, who wants to? It's like uh, trying to preach to somebody about church you know what i mean like these they don't want to hear it um and i think they don't want to hear it because they know that they are way too far behind to really catch up and uh and get on the same level and i think just people don't like sounding stupid and it's like you're not you're not sounding dumb if you don't know dude like you you got to start somewhere and uh, i encourage you like if, right yeah if you're taking that first step and you're watching us like thank you for being here like we appreciate you guys uh for taking that first step but uh like you have a long journey. The rabbit hole is deeper than what you think, and there's so much more to this space than uh, than than people really think. You know, than than what's really on the surface. There's so much more to this space. There's so much utility. There's so much. We haven't even began to scratch the surface. Like even us as users, there's so much, dude. Like we just now started bringing RWAs, you know, real world assets onto the blockchain, and um, it, it's gonna be a uh, it's going to be pretty interesting, man, what happens over the next couple of years, man, when it comes to blockchain and crypto and stuff like that. But, but yeah, man, education is definitely something that uh, we need more of in this space. And, you know, we're, we're taking that step to hopefully um, help onboard the next couple of thousand users. And if you're watching this now, congratulations. You're in a, you're in a good spot. And, and also, to just to go off of what Wes just said, if you guys are watching us, here's the deal. Don't think that me and Wes didn't feel like an idiot in a yeah. chat before saying, "Hey man, 100%. how do I how do I send my my crypto from my exchange yeah. to my wallet?" Like I was there, bro. Arbitrum, we were all there's there. Optimism, there's ETH. How like, do I do bridge? Do? Yeah. So listen, if you guys have those questions like for real, comment Comment on the videos. Comment on our Twitter. Follow yep. us and we hit us up. We we haven't had any questions yet. And that's kind of bummed me out cuz I would almost like I would almost feel better if people were asking the yeah. question. So yeah. it, if you do, don't feel like you're gonna like people are gonna make fun of you or anything. People were nice enough to let us in mm -hmm. to a couple of communities, and and they helped us. So it's like we just want to give back, man. For sure, we want to give back when people have questions and stuff. So we will try to help you. We're not financial advisors. We're just gonna yeah. tell you how we'll to. Point you in the right whatever. direction for sure, man. For sure. Now, uh, now swinging into our next segment here, let's this is it. what it's all about let's too. So let's get into some TA because yeah, this man. is what y'all really want to know right now. Now, I've got some good news. What you got? And man? I've got some. I've got some bad news. What, what do you, you want got? first? I'll take the. I'll take the good news first, man. The people want to hear okay. the good stuff first, man. <laughs> okay, the good news is, the good news is, I believe you're about to be able to buy 
good cryptos for really cheap. That's the good news. That is good you're gonna news. be able to That's great. You're gonna news. be able to scoop some stuff up. Now the bad news, okay, is my stance on the thirty seven thousand eight hundred has had a slight shift mm -hmm. earlier today. I saw something in the charts. I'm sorry, last night I saw something in the charts that kind of spooked me a little bit, and I was like, okay. there's no way we're doing this. There's no way we're going to this level, but I'm going to explain it, why I have this theory and it's why good. I think that this is a possibility, okay? So I am over on my favorite easy-to-use chart reader and easy-to-use uh, app that shows where you can buy cryptos if you go to the Exchange tab or Markets tab. I am on CoinGecko, so that's CoinGecko.com. I love that that um, app. I always have. I've always trusted it, and I've yeah. always used it. So now, if you look at the max chart on CoinGecko right now, okay. anybody can look at the chart and see that, wow, we just had a massive run-up from, you know, where were we, 26,000 up to, you know, 49, and now we're, we're, we're right at 41,000 at the time of recording. So if you take... You don't even have to take really the Fibonacci level mm -hmm. to see that that halfway between those two marks is around thirty five to thirty seven thousand dollars, which is my grayscale level. Right. So this is kind of a two tiered theory. The first tier is the fact that a lot of the GBTC um, Bitcoin was transferred to Coinbase um Yesterday, not a. I don't want to say a majority of it. I'm just yes, saying a, there, a, a, there has a healthy, transfer, yeah. a healthy amount. Okay, so number one, the level for GBTC, remember, was thirty seven thousand eight hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So if that level fails to support, right now we just broke down below forty two thousand. So that showed me that forty two thousand is not that strong, and I didn't think it would be. Okay, I never thought that we had enough support at forty two. Really. Mm -hmm. We're right now dipping below that. So now, obviously, the next level you would say would be, okay, 37800 for a major level. However, and this is a big if, I'm not, I'm not saying go out and put your money in a short. I'm saying the dip that could happen, and this is, you know, keep in mind BlackRock is back in the game, y'all. Mm -hmm. So... Thirty to thirty-three thousand dollars. Thirty around thirty-three thousand dollars is my floor beneath thirty-seven. So okay. I'm not going to be like Garrett Salloway and tell you twenty-five thousand dollar Bitcoin, ten thousand dollar Bitcoin. No, no, no. You ain't getting that. Now thirty-three thousand is a major level of support. So mm -hmm. if if we get a black swan, if we get if Gensler wins this case, if something anything stupid like that happens. I do not believe 47, 42 will hold. We're already below that. I, I seriously doubt. I think they're going to shake some of the GBTC holders out. And keep in mind, these GBTC holders, y'all, their average dollar cost on Bitcoin was $6,000. So right. if they right. sell at $37,000, they are doing all right. They didn't get hurt. Okay, They still 30x their money. So here's my thought, and this is why I think this. If... They panic and want to take their profits and put it in their pockets. I think you will see the the fall below 37 be a very violent one, and it will it will be quick, and it I think will drop down to that 33. It's a potential that yeah. we drop down to that 33 thousand dollar level. That's my yes. negative side, yeah. but my bull my bullish side is still the next move up, which would be $80,000. So I know that's a huge range. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds crazy, but here's the deal. If Bitcoin was at a dollar right now, would you think that 80 cents down to 30 cents is a major move? No, you wouldn't. If Bitcoin just, just went up to 99,000, then came down to, you know, whatever, you'd say, okay, that's kind of a big move, but it's not. And I want you to think of Bitcoin as if it were only at a dollar. And it we we went up to seventy almost seventy cents, and now we're coming down to forty two cents, and then we're going down to say if we go down to thirty three cents, would you would you want to sell it all or would you want to buy more? So I buy what I'm up. what I want to explain is the range of volatility of between thirty and eighty. I don't get scared of with Bitcoin because I think yeah. that that's a, a a very healthy range. It's it's volatile, yes, it's volatile, but I do think that. If you see those levels, I think that that is 
it's going to be healthy because it's going to flush all the weak hands out. Yeah. I'm not calling for it necessarily because I don't know. I, I can't predict the future. I'm just saying that the levels. I see the levels. So yeah. we are we um, are on the same freaking page, dude. And, okay, uh, good, good. Yeah, I was gonna, hoping gonna you go would see that. I'm going to go off of what you just said. I'm on Lux Algo and uh, great tool. Uh, we can drop the link down there. You'll get 20% off if you use our link. But um, Siri, if you're on CoinGecko, go to the max chart. Yep. I'm there. And and uh, I'm on the weekly. I'm on the daily right now. So on the daily, oh, I just hit my microphone. On the daily, right? We are in a, a we're in a, we're in a downtrend, right? Last last one we got was a sell signal to the downtrend, or in a downtrend, sixty five percent downtrend. Um, and let's see the 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 take profit is going to start at forty thousand dollars, right? Um, Reversal is not until about thirty seven eight. Where, where your levels are we wow we are, we're dude getting, wow yeah we're getting a bottoming that's out awesome. signal right now uh but that's on the daily now i'm gonna switch to the weekly and that's gonna look like your max on coin gecko mm -hmm. now this tells a whole nother story right here this tells yeah. a whole nother story because here we are on the short term on the daily we're, we're looking at getting a pullback we got a sell signal um and we could kind of come up tomorrow you know we need a we need a correction to the upside and we probably will get one but i do think we may continue to come back down but look at this rounded bottom dude look at that I rounded saw, bottom. i see it now I look see at it on the weekly. look at the top right there that top mm -hmm. is like almost break even dude so this to me is the cup without the handle so i think that what we're looking at right here potentially is going to be a cup and handle but we need to retrace to make that handle if we retrace to make that handle, guess where the target's going to be? 37, 37,000. Maybe we come back down a little bit more, 34. We don't know. But either way, I think we are going to make that handle. And then if you look at the, you know, you take that um, that pole, you take the measured move, and you put it at the end of that handle. If we come back down to 37, 36, whatever, you know, either way, like we not sure exactly when that handle is going to stop. Or where this you know support's going to be on that handle, um, hopefully thirty seven, thirty eight, like you've talked about. Uh, but if we do, man, even like it's not going to change the measured move, you know, the center of that cup. And I mean, we're talking sixty thousand dollars, but we may need to come down a little bit more. And on the weekly, Lux Algo is we do have a blood diamond at the top on on the oscillator, and uh, yeah, I mean, we could come down a little bit more, but. That's fine. Like that's good, guys. This is opportunity. Take that opportunity to buy at some of these lower levels, you know. But it, even if we go down, what we're at forty one, forty two right now. Even if we go down to thirty eight, don't don't sit on the sidelines and wait. Don't sit on the sidelines and wait. This is like if you zoom out and you're on the freaking yearly, like you can see the last two years. We've had we we do what do we do, Siri? It's three green, one red, three green, one red, right? Yeah. And we just put our red in last year. Like this is gonna be a bullish year. Um, right now, that is a wicked cup. I mean, it, and the target is gonna be up around sixty mid sixty thousand dollars right there, up around that all time high. It puts us on track for the um, for the having. And um, I think that would be a good thing, dude. If we start retracing and we come back down to that thirty-seven or thirty-eight thousand dollar level that you were talking about for so, so long, dude. I say so we come just, back down, we retest that thirty-seven, thirty-eight, only to to move up and then take that measured move up to around a new all-time high, man. And 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 I I'm I'm still eyeing that now. Now my my if you measure that target breakout on the max chart for that gigantic cup. If you look at that gigantic cup, right, it, it the price target of that is eighty thousand dollars because you measure from the bottom of the cup to the top of the cup. No, the no, you measure from the bottom of the handle after it pulls back. No, I'm saying if you measure from the top of the cup to the bottom of the center. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Right. So if we get the handle, I'm yep. saying after the after we get the handle and it comes back up to uh around 42,000 or whatever. Then the target breakout of the depth of the cup is 80,000. Yeah. So so here here's what I'm saying though. The the handle target would be 37,800, which we all know is the grayscale level, but what I'm seeing on the max chart, the reason I'm calling for 
I don't want to say I'm calling for it, but damn it, I almost have to commit now. <laughs> I, dude, I see this level, and it's it's killing me not to talk about it because if you look at the max chart, it's one, two, three, four, five times. And and something I've noticed about Bitcoin is Bitcoin is a nine time kind of uh, mover, uh -huh. and if you t if you take the exact. <laughs> Um, spot of where that is, where we've hit five times. It's at yep. thirty three. It's at thirty three thousand, bro. We could so absolutely here's a, come back down if, to thirty three. And if, if I'm not mistaken, do, there's a there's still a gap there too, man. A CME gap somewhere around there. There may be that. That's what I'm saying, dude. So look, let's we just could. say this. All right, we could. What if we? What if they just play? Because we got BlackRock in the game playing games, y'all. Yeah, straight up. So yep. it's a different game. Whatever you thought you were doing as a DJ before, you better wake <laughs> up because these cats don't play, dude. They don't. They do not play. Right. So a drop down to thirty three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Jamie Dimon was buying Bitcoin before thirty three thousand. He's been calling it a pet rock for eight years. You know what yep. that means? He's been buying Bitcoin for eight years. That's right. That's right. So, so because I don't trust a damn thing that comes out of his mouth. So here's the <laughs> thing: if they drop the GBT GBTC level, all those early investors that got into GBTC say, you know what? I'm out. I'm out. I, I want my yeah. profit. I, I bought in at six grand. I got a discount. They made a hell of money. They 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 killed it. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So so what if they just say, you know what? Whoop! Pull the rug on retail. Retail's gonna gonna go nuts. They're gonna lose their hand. Don't be weak handed, y'all. If this happens and we do go, I'm just saying, if we go to thirty three, you need to be like a do hawk. Not, right. You're you're you saying, need to scoop. You're saying if bro, we go to thirty three. That is not the time to get out of the market. If Hell anything, that no! Is the That's time when to you go, go in balls deep, like. And, and I think Easy. this is a this is a good segue into into this next. Um, topic and that's the ETF. I just guys. had to, yeah, I had to get that out of my chest. Yeah, dude, Wes. No, I'm sorry. Sure. I had to... And it makes sense though, man, because look, we just got the ETF, right? And something that that I want to make clear is, no matter how early you think you are, these institutional players these these whales they are always a step ahead and i mean you follow the money you follow the whales you follow the whales you're following us right that's remora you follow us you're following the money you're following the whales so here's my thing man a lot of people are disappointed with the etf and the outcome and, and bitcoin's price movement right they're all saying oh well, you know two billion dollars came into the market why didn't bitcoin's price move why why is bitcoin still around forty two thousand? if all why this is money came down? into the markets right and and here's 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 what i got to say about that six to eight to ten months ago when when bitcoin bottomed out at 17 or what was it 15 to seventeen thousand dollars they these guys were buying that two billion dollars that was bought up that was bought otc when the etf went live and they were buying at seventeen thousand, but maybe they were DCA and, and it wasn't. You know, it was obviously the price move. We went from seventeen thousand all the way up to you know forty five thousand. Here's the thing, man. These guys are smart. They they had that money chilling on the side. They were buying up Bitcoin at seventeen to twenty five thousand. That's what made it move. When the ETF went live, they did the OTC deal. And what I mean by that is maybe they had somebody. I'm, I'm just speaking hypothetically, but. Maybe they had someone like Coinbase and they said, hey, man, listen, the ETF is in the works. You know, we have our application in. We're going to get the ETF eventually, and it's probably going to happen in the next couple months. Here's $2 billion that I can guarantee you. Go ahead and buy us up some Bitcoin at $17,000 to $25,000 per Bitcoin. Go ahead and buy up $2 billion worth of Bitcoin. Here's the money. And then when the ETF goes live, I will give you 2% of the profits. We make between 17000 and 45000 or 50000 whatever. That's a lot of money when you're talking about billions of dollars. 1% is a lot of money when you're talking about billions of dollars. Yeah, I'm sure so it is. This is what they do, man. They already had that Bitcoin purchased back when Bitcoin was at seventeen and 25000 when we were screaming Absolutely. from the rooftops for you guys to buy. Like we were buying. Yeah. Because... You know, that's that's the whole point of Remora's. We, we, we try to stay with the whales and what they're doing, the moves they're making. This is what they do. They're always a step ahead, but we are too. And when the ETF went live, 
that was an OTC thing. Like, all right, here's that two billion that um that I told you I'd give you. There's a two billion. You take a percentage of that, give me my Bitcoin, and then they offered it to their clients. But their clients are buying at forty five thousand. Their clients are buying forty five thousand dollar bitcoins when they were buying it back at seventeen and twenty five thousand dollars, right? Um, patience, guys, patience. And here's another thing, man: is like BlackRock, they don't have Bitcoin on their balance sheet yet. BlackRock doesn't own Bitcoin. They have Bitcoin right. that they offer to their clients. Their clients own Bitcoin, and they're managing that Bitcoin. Wait till these institutions start coming in and buying Bitcoin for their balance sheets to hedge against inflation. That's when the run-up is going to happen. That's when Bitcoin is going to be up around $200,000, $250,000. And I can guarantee you right now, dude, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're going to do it. Like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And maybe it happens when, when we get this pullback, dude. There's so much money that they have that they can manipulate the price like that if they want to, man. You know, I don't Absolutely. know. That's just kind of my theory on it, dude. What do you think? Dude, I I think I think me and you even without talking much this week cuz we we've been both been super busy with a lot of craziness. I think both of our mind and both of the fact that we've been in this game for almost 3 years, 4 yeah. years going on, you know. Yeah. We've seen this before and what I want what I urge all all of you out there watching this is what this is what I urge you to look at it as, okay? Bitcoin is at 41 cents. Don't think of it as in dollars for a right, minute. Right, go, right, right. Go back to cents. Go back to cents. Yeah. Bitcoin's at 41 cents. Now, if Bitcoin drops down to 33 cents, does that mean it's a bad technology? Does it mean that it's a horrible thing? Is it a bad investment? Absolutely freaking not. This is your chance this it, is yeah. when you have to switch that light on in your head. You have sure. to learn how to be an inverse, not an inverse Kramer. God knows. Don't yeah. do that. Contrary. But you have, do the you've opposite. got to learn to do the opposite of your emotions because if you're all hyped up and your emotions were like 49,000, I'm selling my car and I'm buying Bitcoin. <laughs> right. It's right. No, dude. No, dude. That's when the you're, time, right. It, or, you know, it's like I'm selling my car to buy more. No, when <laughs> right, it goes right. red, this is what it is. Red means go and green means stop. If you can, if you can learn that, yeah. if you can f tap that into in that head, yeah. as an investor, and I don't give a crap what you're doing. Stocks, real estate, yeah. coffee, um, sugar, you can trade Forex. <laughs> but if you learn, if you learn that red means go and green means stop, then you will do good in investment. So what I'm telling you right now is Bitcoin's down 3.6%. I would not go all in right now because I'm I'm telling you, until I see what what is going on in the world, we got election year, they could drop it. And if they do and we drop down a whopping thirty to thirty three thousand, that's only what? Set eight thousand yeah. dollars drop on Bitcoin. Yeah. So that your risk side is eight thousand dollars so is it a bad time to buy no but i would hold some cash on the side if you can yeah just absolutely. in case absolutely. just in case we yep. get that drop to 33 we, so dollar cost average on the way down let it go down ladder yeah. in buy a little more buy a little heavier buy and the yep. further it goes the more you go heavy in then you wait you yeah. sit on your hands and you freaking wait yeah i mean there's for facts. it to jump there's facts that we have to take into consideration here fact one we are in a four-year cycle every time, dude. I don't care until the four-year cycle breaks. Then, like, I'm not, you know, I'm gonna keep, um, you know, putting my weight into the the four-year cycle. Like until it breaks, it's still relevant. And the one fact is, is like we just went through a year plus bear market, and now we are, you know, coming into 2024. And uh, we got the having coming up. We have interest rates about to drop. We got presidential elections. There's so much that's happening that it's 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 different. It, buying on the way down is different than buying on the way down in the bear market. Like you know what I mean? Buying yeah. on the way down in a bull market is good. It's you're fun. dollar cost it's averaging, fun. and you're trying to get your entry lower. So yes. if you're just now getting into the markets and you're seeing the price going down, and and you're thinking to yourself like, why would I keep DCAing dollar cost averaging? If the price is just going to keep going down, well, it's not. It's not financial advice, but we are on a cycle. This four-year cycle has been intact since you know the uh, the birth inception. of yeah inception of Bitcoin, and until that breaks, 
you are all good to to buy Bitcoin if it keeps dropping and even buy dude like I think Bitcoin is a buy under its all time high his its last all time high. I don't know, man. That that's just what I think, dude. I I think you, I'm gonna keep buying it until it's at that last all time high at least, dude. And then I'm gonna let it run. And and <sighs> keep in mind, y'all. Here's the thing: if let's say this thirty three thousand dollar Bitcoin happens, yeah. It ain't going to stay there but for maybe two or three weeks. I That's bought exactly Ethereum. Dude. I bought Ethereum, and, and I can bring up my records one It'll day. Whip. If, if, any, if, if anybody whip. tests me on this, I can bring up my records on this. I bought Ethereum between $75 and 150 bucks. When yeah. everyone was panicking, Ethereum was what was it? it? It only was there for a couple of weeks, y'all. Yeah. So here's the thing. I was looking at it, and I was like, Oh my God, Ethereum, 75 bucks. Like, Dude, oh I didn't God. have, I, I wish I would have had a big pile of money back then. And unfortunately, I didn't have any family or friends that were like, here you go. Here's a big yeah, pile of money. We trust I know, you. Man, I because I, let me tell you what, I'd probably be competing with Mr. Beast right now if I did. Because <laughs> right. I, I, I sold every stock I owned. I sold yep. my Uber. I sold everything and went all in on Ethereum. And that's when yep. I caught my first that run. That was the right from, thing, dude. Dude, and it was a hell of a run. You I watched right ETH thing. go from 75 bucks to 600 bucks, and yep. I was just like, I knew I called Ethereum. It was the yep. right call. Just like I'm calling Arbitrum, right? Yep. And I've been Arbitrum. calling Arbitrum, and and we've been calling Arbitrum. I mean, we've been— Tia, Tia, dude, I think is one that yeah, there, there's going to be a lot of benefits to holding Tia. So, uh, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, if, if we get the drop and we go down to 33, don't get discouraged. Don't That's when you go nuts, dude. Put That's when you get in. crazy. Yeah. That's when you go and get the coins you want, man, that when yep. they're on fire sale. So re sure. retrain your brain. And if you get nothing else from this episode, take that away from it. Retrain. Yeah, for sure. Um, I do. I know we're running out of time here, but I do want to touch on, mm -hmm. since we're talking about Ethereum and, and the ETF and all this stuff, I do want to touch on this. And I want to give my, my theory on the uh, Ethereum price. Uh, you know, Obviously, since the beginning of the year, Bitcoin was taking the lead. I mean, there was one point where Bitcoin was up 160% on the year and ethereum was up like 70 percent and then the la after the etf we saw ethereum run dude and and they kind of switched roles here there you know bitcoin was up like three percent on the week ethereum there was a time where it was up uh 17 on the week and i'm just gonna go back to to my etf theory and how they were buying back when when uh bitcoin was seventeen thousand and uh, you know up to twenty five thousand. There's all been taught. What have they all done? They've all put their application in for the Ethereum ETF next. We got the Bitcoin ETF. Bitcoin hasn't moved since the ETF, really, except down. But what did Ethereum do? Bit Ethereum started moving up. So I think the same thing is going to play out for Ethereum, dude. They, you know, they've all got their Ethereum applications in, and they're going to be buying Ethereum. While everybody's paying attention to the Bitcoin ETF and what's going on there, I think that they are buying I think they're buying up Ethereum, dude, and that's the next ETF that's going to come live. So they're going to be prepared. And then when you know, by the time the Ethereum ETF goes live, everybody's going to be they're going to be selling their Ethereum to everybody else. Maybe I don't know, but I do think it's something to pay attention to. Um, yeah, I mean it makes sense to me, dude. Like, it just happened. Like it just flipped all of a sudden. And yeah, like. Bitcoin's always had that first mover advantage. It always trickles down from, you know, um, the risk assets. Like, you know, once they uh, make money on their Bitcoin, they'll take their profits and take their initial out. And then they'll go into riskier coins. They'll go into Ethereum, into the altcoins, and then NFTs will get a run. Um, so it could just be that. But I think the uh, Ethereum ETF is next. And um, I would definitely pay attention to Ethereum. To, for these guys getting in on Ethereum. Absolutely, for man. Sure. Yeah, I, I think that is going to wrap it up for today's episode, y'all. Yeah. But um, we're, we are going to be putting out some stuff. Wef, Wes has got some um, airdrop videos. I think he's going to do a couple yep. uh, ideas to let you guys know what he's airdrop farming. And yep. I'm back as well. Now that I've got my little setup a little bit better behind me, it's not 100% ready, but... Um, yeah, here, just be, just be looking because we're going to be doing some stuff, man. So uh, we got some surprises. We might start. Uh, we might do a thing where we actually hit the street and yeah, do a dude. live stream together, yes. me and Wes. Yes. So be looking be forward to that. And also 
Crypto Remora merch might be on the way Dude. too. Working Some Crypto hard, Remora guys. merch, hard. bro. So it's coming. So to just, just, <laughs> just sure. don't go nowhere. I know it's been a, a week or two that we hadn't had a video. That, that don't be getting antsy. We're not going nowhere. We're we ain't not going, going nowhere, nowhere, man. We we yep. We're here for the long run, man. And uh, we appreciate you guys for being here. Um, and, and definitely checking us out, man. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do so. Hit the like button, share, share, share. Um, and yeah, anything else you want to add, Siri, before we jump off? No, that's it. Just remember what I said about red means go, green means stop. Not it's while you're driving, not in the car. Not in the car, not, not in the car, car. Not, not in the car. car. Only in the crypto <laughs> sense. Or stocks, or real estate, or, or bonds, or anything investment-wise. So, yeah. <laughs> Everything's good, guys. Relax. Bitcoin's going to come back. Everything's going to be fine, man. We still have a long road ahead. A lot of moving parts happening. So uh, relax, and um, yeah, man, just enjoy the ride, man. DCA and enjoy the ride, dude. It's going to be uh, great times, great times. Um, yeah, uh, guys, make sure you're following us on all socials at the Crypto Remora. Make sure you're following Sierra at Sierra Crypto. Make sure you're following myself at Crypto MacGyver. That's going to do it for tonight. Much love to you guys. Much love to the donkeys. Much love to the Arvanauts and everyone here tonight. And until next time, peace out.